All right, so uh, yeast uh, operate um, according to this equation here for cellular respiration. They use glucose and oxygen to produce energy, and the yeast um, oxygen uptake rate uh, formula is provided here. It's simply OUR equals QO2 times X, where QO2 is the yeast respiration rate and X is the yeast density. As for the oxygen transfer rate, OTR, that's uh, given here. There's uh, more variables though. It's OTR equals KL multiplied by A times C star minus CL, and KL is the mass transfer coefficient, A is the interfacial area per unit volume, C star is the saturation concentration or equilibrium solubility of the dissolved oxygen in the liquid, plate, liquid phase, CL is the dissolved oxygen in the liquid phase. And because um, KL and A are both uh, difficult to measure on their own, they're uh, combined into a lumped parameter, KLA, and this is the volumetric mass transfer coefficient. All right, and Henry solubility will be used here. It's equal to CA over P, where CA is the concentration of the species in the aqueous phase, and P is the partial pressure. And here, um, in this case, the species we're dealing with is oxygen. So this value can be looked up for different species, and it'll be, need to be looked up for oxygen. And the partial pressure can be figured out from the conditions. And then these will be used to calculate CA or C star, the saturation concentration. The differential equation for the dissolved uh, concentration of oxygen in the liquid phase is provided here. It's a combination of the two equations that were previously discussed. It's the oxygen transfer rate minus the oxygen uptake rate, which were provided here. All right, so in the static method with no yeast, this term is gonna go to zero because there's no yeast consuming oxygen. So the amount of dissolved oxygen in the liquid phase is just equal to OTR, which when substituted gives this equation. This can be, this equation here can be manipulated and put into linear Y equals MX plus B form. And then you see here we have the y and the x, and when you plot y versus x, or in this case, the natural log of C star minus CL versus T, this will give you a slope of negative KLA, which we, which we want. The dynamic calculation is a little bit more complicated because there's this extra term here. We can't cross it out. Whenever the yeast is present, you have the oxygen transfer rate and you also have the oxygen uptake rate. So this cannot be rearranged as easily. So what we'll do instead is on the plot, find out when DCL DT is equal to zero and that happens uh, when the slope is zero. And under these conditions, uh, with a slope of zero, zero will be equal to the right hand side of the equation and we can solve for KLA by simple algebraic manipulation according to this equation here. And while all these equations are uh, really useful, it helps to compare the equations to what the plot should actually look like. So for the, the static method, we have the dissolved oxygen versus time and we're starting with initially there's no oxygen in the system and then you allow oxygen to enter until you hit a uh, maximum percentage of dissolved oxygen. And uh, both the dynamic and static methods have the driving force of C star minus CL. So initially, the slope is gonna be really high because there's no oxygen in the system. But as you approach that maximum dissolved concentration, the slope will decrease and eventually will flatline and this right here is your stable value. As for the dynamic method, 
instead of starting at zero concentration, you'll start at the maximum concentration here. And then you'll cut off the oxygen supply and allow the yeast to consume oxygen. So this piece right here, this linear portion, the yeast consume the oxygen at a constant rate. So this can be, OUR can just be found by the rise over the run. The amount of oxygen that's consumed over the time span. And it's very important, um, this part, it's gonna be cut off at 25 because you don't want the uh, DO to get below that level. And this, at this point, is when the oxygen supply will be returned to the system. And just as before, similar to the static method, the dynamic method will have this, this similar shape, but the difference here is that you have both oxygen uptake and oxygen transfer rate occurring at the same time, whereas the static method just had the oxygen transfer rate. So for this lab, we'll be using a couple of different pieces of equipment. There's a jacketed batch reactor um, with an agitation system. This controls the agitator. There's also a rotameter that allows you to do airflow or nitrogen flow. Um, a dissolved oxygen probe, just make sure you take it out of the case before you use it. And the LabQuest software. For the static method, you'll fill the reactor with two liters of water and then connect the airflow to the reactor and turn the air on. Before you start, you need to calibrate the DO probe. So you'll place it in the reactor while it's being aerated. And then on LabQuest, you choose sensor, calibrate, and choose the optical DO probe. Select one point calibration and then wait until this value levels out, at which point you'll enter 100% into the value to save that as the maximum value. Next, you'll outgas the system by turning the flow to nitrogen. Watch your dissolved oxygen level. Once it reaches 0%, you'll start recording and turn the air back on, as well as set your airflow and agitation rates to the chosen parameters. Watch the graph and once the value levels out, you are done with the run. The dynamic method, the reactor will be full of two liters of the yeast media you prepared previously. You'll need to calibrate the DO probe again, but because this is full of a cell culture, you'll need to do it in pure water. So you'll fill this flask with pure water and attach the airflow and turn the air on. Then you'll place the DO probe in this flask and follow the same calibration steps as before using LabQuest. Once it's calibrated, you'll place it in the reactor. And before you start agitating the reactor, you need to add uh, anti-foaming agent to it because the yeast will start foaming up and come out of your reactor if you don't. Next, you'll reattach the airflow to the reactor and turn on the air to oxygenate it. You'll watch your dissolved oxygen level, and once it levels out, that'll be the maximum value you can reach in this system. Once it's level, you'll turn off the airflow and allow the yeast to consume the oxygen to determine your oxygen uptake rate. Once it has reached 25% of the maximum value, you turn the air back on. If you go any lower than that, you'll be killing the yeast. Uh, as in the previous method, you wait until the plot levels out, and that is when your run is done. If you decide to measure growth rate, you'll use the spectrophotometer. First, you need to calibrate it for 0 and 100% transmittance. You'll take your calibration standards, place them in the chamber, set wavelength to 600, and for the black, adjust transmittance to zero. Then you'll take the water and set transmittance to 100. Once the spectrophotometer has been calibrated, you can take samples of your yeast media uh, every 20 minutes or so and measure 
the adsorbents. If it's above one, you'll need to dilute your solution until the absorbance measures below, or in the decimals. Make sure when you take your measurement, the, make sure the sample is properly mixed, otherwise it will not be homogeneous.